Welcome to Sewing with Nancy. I'm Nancy Zeman. You're in for a treat. Sewing specialist and author Gail Brown is joining me to present this three-part series on quick gifts and decor. Thanks for joining me, Gail. It's a pleasure. I'm looking forward to sharing our quick-to-make projects. It's going to be a great series. During this first program, we're concentrating on transforming linens into terrific gifts, starting with a soft tote made from just four napkins. Take the advantage of this carry-all for toting workout clothes, overnight, or baby gear. Because it's soft and folds nearly flat, the tote can be packed inside your suitcase as a handy second bag for shopping. Hung up, it also doubles as a pretty laundry bag or diaper holder. That's what's next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's how-to sewing program with Nancy Zeman is being brought to you by Pfaff, the largest European producer of sewing machines. Pfaff's creative line of sewing machines and hobby lock sergers are simply the best. Ginger, a tradition of quality in scissors and shears for home, classroom, and industry. Ginger scissors and shears are the choice of professionals. Oxmoor House, the publisher of innovative sewing, quilting, and craft books, including books by Nancy Zeman. Madeira Thread from Germany with superior quality and smart packaging to make it a sensational value. Preferred by home and professional embroiderers everywhere. And Nancy's Notions Catalog, featuring specialty sewing books and unique hard-to-find sewing notions and supplies. As we mentioned, to make this soft tote, you're going to need four napkins. And the size of tote that you were modeling, Gail, was, had 20-inch napkins. So they were on the large size. This sample that we're using on this board is, these are 15 inch napkins. So this would yield a smaller mm -hmm. tote. Uh, for a bigger tote, you definitely want to use a larger napkin. The first step is to meet two napkins, wrong sides together, and fuse them together. And I've used here the fusible web tape that leaves a web here. Mm -hmm. And we remove this and press these two together. You could edge stitch them, Nancy, but pressing is my fast method. And then I just press these together to create a durable base for our tote. And we're quickly pressing this. You yes. follow the manufacturer's instructions and get these two napkins fused together. We mentioned that you'll need four napkins and meet one napkin on top of the center base. This will, the two fused will become the center base, base, and you're going to sew those together. This is our seaming magic. We're going to use a quarter inch seam after meeting the edges and stitch in an L-shaped pattern with a straight stitch. So just two sides, one side and one base. Right. And then our next sample will show mm -hmm. stitching the other side of the tote. Let's just look here again because this has been stitched. This one was stitched in our L-shape. We fold that one back and place this one on here and again with a straight stitch. We're stitching in an L shape again. And once we get that pinned, we already have the side seam pinned. It's just not the top one. And a narrow seam. Maybe I have a little wide seam um, here. Quarter inch works best. So this time, it's an inverted L. Now, this is the magic of it. Watch what happens. And now you have a three-dimensional tote. And you can see why you have used the base, because have a double layer, just for giving it support. Now, to get the shaping at the corners, you don't have to do any special folding, but just some measuring. This one on our smaller napkin is about four inches, Nancy, and all I do is straight stitch across and then trim off the seam about half or a quarter of an inch, and that miters that corner. On a larger bag, mm -hmm. you probably want to go as much as five inch miter. So when we turn this right side out and we'll just tuck these corners out, presto, it's a great Great tote with a finishing touch. For the handle, I generally put a square of fusible interfacing on the corners to reinforce them and then overlap about a half an inch and simply edge stitch. And you can see the size of this tote. It would be a, a small little tote. Let me show you the one that is larger size using the 20 inch size napkins. You can purchase these, make your own however you'd like. In this sample, we have the fusible interfacing square. It's kind of white on white, but we fused it in here just to give that little extra weight to support the top tie. Then, Nancy, I simply overlap them an mm -hmm. inch and a half and edge stitch. Now, this tote shows that we have the surged edges, but they've been butt together rather than a seaming, and that's a nice option. Here you can see at the sewing machine that we're just meeting 
those edges together and zigzagging them. And Gail, you like to do this because? It maximizes the size of the napkin and it also uh, gives you less bulk. A very flat seam. This, this is a fun one. This one I used hem napkins and instead of butting or seaming, I overlapped and top stitched matching the hemline and in the inside, you can see it's just, you just see the stitching line on the back. Again, not very bulky at all. The advantages of using pre-made linens or finished edges is that everything's very flat. You add a little extra detail on this tote. I added a button where the two hemmed edges overlap there and a buttonhole and a button on the handle so that it can be put away flat. So to make this easy soft tote, you're going to use four napkins, overlap two, meet them together, fusing the edges, and then do the L seaming. The inverted L on one side, L shaped on the other, and after mitering the corners and overlapping the tops, you have a soft tote that's very functional, a great gift, and very fun to wear and use. Here's another time-saving transformation, using napkins to create a spectacular tablecloth. This unusual starburst design suits just about any table size or shape, whether round, oval, rectangular, or square. A versatile accessory, this table scarf can also be draped over a piano or folded as a hearth accent. Our tote took four napkins. This tablecloth is going to work with six napkins, and we need to have a specific pattern. Yes, and show me how you made that with our special paper. In the book that accompanies today's program, or this series, you'll get this pattern, but you could also make this by on a piece of paper drawing one line, and then with your ruler, and I've outlined this, the 30 degree angle on the ruler, mark a 30 degree line on either side of that center point. We're going to put six napkins together, and this will give us a 360 degree radius. Now we've used a paper backed, or a wax backed paper that has a gridded surface, and the wax back is great for this technique because we can press it on the napkin multiple times for the getting it pressed to the right point. Let's just center this a little bit, right. Gail. You can see we've put the point of the paper at the point of the napkin and kind of have equal amounts on either side. So once it's centered, um, I press it down and this temporarily holds the pattern in place so that I can then press mark the sides of our table scarf sections. And it's very easy, once that's much easier than pinning, then to press what go. will be my prospective seam lines. Now you'll find that when working with napkins, you may not have all the napkins the same size, if, if you purchase them in particular. Yes, um, this is not an exact science, Nancy, and you'll notice in upcoming steps how we adjust for those irregularities. Just peel off the paper, save it, and press the remaining five napkins. They're all going to be pressed the same, and then we'll make adjustments in our size as we seam. We're going to put three napkins together, create a half, make two halves. Yes, be sure to do a half at a time, and then you'll do one center seam. Now, on this napkin that I'm meeting, you can see that I have the press mark. I'm just going to open that flat. And Gail, you're going to overlap it. Overlap, and I'm going to meet those two press mark lines and pin. And I'm going to pin just at the fold so that when we turn it to the inside, you can find our press mark and seam. And once you do that and have your press marks there, then you can, you're going to add your third napkin to make our half. We have one already pr pinned and pressed. We're going to have a lot of tablecloths, Gail. Yes, <clears throat> I, these are beautiful and they, it's great for a matching set of napkins, too. Here's half of the Starburst tablecloth and it's just pinned, but let's point out a, from this napkin, it was press marked along this line. It was, and notice how we've made a variation in our press marking. We've stepped away from that a little bit so that we can match our pattern. Again, compensating for the irregularities. So you have permission to fudge. This yes. is good fudge factors right here. Then after sewing a second half, together, then we're going to meet the two halves. And now we have our whole table scarf and we're going to stitch 
our center seam. You may need to make this one a little bit deeper. Stick with your matching, but in order to flatten the table scarf and also to um, uh, match your pattern. On the inside, you have a large seam allowance. So here you've done some trimming. Just trimmed it off. If it needs to be finished, you could serge or zigzag those seams together. Here is our finished sample that we showed you earlier. And it is a fun tablecloth to get together, put together, a great gift as well as an accent for your home. One of our favorite gifts to give is an organizer created from a placemat and self-sealing storage bags. With a minimum of time and supplies, you can create an organizer to conveniently store your favorite sewing notions or travel accessories. Rest assured, it will be a welcomed gift. Gail, the ideas or the supplies that we need for this are really very simple, streamlined. We start with a placemat. A basic placemat. A line placemat, and then we're going to press mark it right down the center. So I just fold and press. And this will um, give us a line for stitching and for lining up our bags. Go to your grocery store. Just buy whatever type of self-sealing bags that will fit the type of accessories that you'll use or the sewing notions. I think we've used 12. You can use as few or as many mm -hmm. and whatever sizes suit your uh, accessory items that you're putting in them. To keep them kind of aligned, we've put some sewing tape holding them together. You could, you could even stack them, stagger them, whatever you'd like. And they'll be longer probably than the half of the placemat. So simply just stitch along that folded line. Do one side at a time. On this sample, we have it stitched, just one side stitched. We've just put a half a dozen or so little self-sealing bags in this area. And then do some trimming. Trim away the, you don't have to trim it right next to the stitching, but give yourself a little extra room. And you can so see if the bags were a little larger, it wouldn't matter, Nancy, because no. you can just trim off the base. So really what you're worried about is, not worried about, but what you want to choose the bags for is the size, the width of them. Yes. Then after stitching one side, then add some bags to the other side. Very, very easy. This will take maybe a half an hour at the top to do this. Now, ribbon is a good way to hold the base, or you can have a strip of fabric. Here we have a strip of fabric. This is half-inch wide ribbon. Simply would turn under the edges and place over the seams. And then you can use matching ribbon that's maybe slightly narrower, about 18-inch lengths, to make your ties or a self-fabric. And simply stitch those ribbons or ties to the center. Tie it up. This is a terrific gift. It, many people can use this for a variety of things, and it just fits our a theme. A great gift. Quick gifts and decor. Whether headed to or from the pool, beach or bath, these towel wraps add warmth and imaginative fun. The basic ingredients are as simple as the sewing, a bath and hand towel. The creative touch comes by adding a quick applique to give this gift great character. To make these fun towel wraps, you're going to need the large towel and meet the short ends of the towel together so that you have a fold. This will be basically the shoulder line of the towel. After finding the center spot, just by folding the ends in half, you're going to trim away an opening. And this opening is nine inches long by two inches wide. And you can see I've tapered the center points or the end points. Trim this section away from the towel. And this towel has it already trimmed. And you could zigzag if the, this, these edges if you would like. I would like to show you two other towel shapes or characters. You can have a cow shape as well as a bunny shape. I think these are really cute. And I'll show you Spot the Dog that you saw earlier. All of these designs are given in the book that accompanies today's program. When working on the towel area, the hood area, you're going to be working with a hand towel. And I've trimmed one long edge of the towel down to 14 inches. This width is 14 inches. So this has been trimmed away. And notice again, I have a center point mark, so I know where to place my character images. The appliques will go in this area. As with most appliques, if you've seen on Sewing with Nancy before, we've traced the images on paperback fusible web. And then you'd roughly cut these out and fuse these to the wrong side of some fabric. After trimming away, then you peel the paper to expose the fusible web. 
There's another type of fusible web that you can use as well, which I've used on this, that has a special backing that when you peel this away, it's sticky, sticky to the touch. So you do not have to press it, which works out nicely on this velour type towel. I'm going to flip this to the wrong side. We have Spot already in process. I have his eyes and nose, and now I'd simply just put his little mouth into place. And the next step after doing this is to apply a layer of a stabilizer. Just put a stabilizer underneath the towel, and then we are ready to stitch around the edges at the sewing machine. To set up your machine for applique, choose rayon embroidery thread. You'll need thread colors to, to match your appliques. And then also work with a machine embroidery needle. You'll need the correct needle with the correct thread to prevent the thread from fraying. It will give you great results. In the bobbin, rather than using a light or heavyweight thread, use a very lightweight thread because you'll not need that concentration of thread. This is a compressed bobbin. It's a fast way of working with it. Or you could just purchase a thread and wind it. On the foot of the machine, consider working with an embroidery foot or an open toe foot. This will allow you to see where you're going a little bit more easily for directing the applique stitches. For the setup at the machine, I have my machine set for a zigzag stitch, 3.0 is where I have it right now, and a short length, about 0.5 or 0.4. Do a testing on your fabric to see exactly what setting you should have, and then slightly loosen that top tension by two numbers or two notches. I remember I have the stabilizer underneath the applique area, and then I'm simply going to put the foot over the applique, and when zigzagging, the left zig is off the applique, or, excuse me, the right zig is off the applique, and the left obviously is in the applique, and you can just guide this. You can see why that open toe foot area or an embroidery foot with a clear portion would make the stitching go a lot smoother. So take your time, go around the area, enjoy the process of stitching all the appliques down. Then tear away the stabilizer from the back. And this is another one that we finished already. You can see that we've sat and stitched around the edges. Now it's time to put the hood together. To shape the hand towel, fold the towel in half, meeting the short edges. But stitch along the top edge with a fourth of an inch seam allowance. And then you may want to zigzag these edges together to prevent them from raveling. Form this seam so that it goes down the center of the towel. You can see the appliques underneath. It's going right down the center. And to get the hood shape, measure five inches from the point, five inches down, and sew across that measurement. Here's a, one that I've already trimmed off. Before sewing, do trim this section off. Let me show this to you on the next sample. The reason that you need to trim this is to obviously to get the shape, but also placement for the ears. The ears have been pinned in this section. I'll fold this back so you can see where they're, they're shaped and sew across the top edge. You're almost ready to attach the hood now to the main towel. We did that trimming, the neckline change a little bit earlier. Well, now the towel lower edge is just a little bit longer than the opening to the neckline. So to get it the right size, fold in a few tucks. We have found that the tuck's about an inch and a half deep on both sides of the center back then pin around, pin the towel around that neckline opening. Sew with a fourth of an inch seam allowance. And then zigzag the edges. When you turn it right side out, you have the towel wrap with the hand towel and bath towel and quick appliques. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make the towel wraps. They're a lot of fun to make and to give. A time-saving element to consider when working with the appliques is to use applique's. This type of paperback fusible web has an additional feature. After you peel back the paper, you'll find what it remains is pressure sensitive. It's sticky. So then your appliques can be placed on your fabric, in this instance the terry cloth, without having to be fused, and then do the stitching. It's a real time saver. Here's a hint from Nancy's Notion sewing catalog. Our sewing advisor shared this hint on how they organize sewing machine presser feet. 
they place each foot in one of these see-through zippered pockets in the versa bag and label the pocket with a type of foot. They also tuck in the instructions for that foot so it is easy to locate a foot and then review how to use it. The versa bag zips open so it can lie flat like a book. You can rearrange the removable pocket pages to suit your needs and there's ample room for additional pages to be added. Here's a hint from Ginger. When scissors and shears become dull, take five to six seconds to use a sharpening stone to resharpen the knife edge blade. Simply open your shears and grip the scissors firmly. On the knife edge blade, start in the center with the hone at the same angle and sharpen upward. Repeat the strokes. After completed, wipe off the blade to remove any filings. Today on Sewing with Nancy, get inspired to create quick gifts and decorating ideas. My co-host during this three-part series on quick gifts and decor is frequent Sewing with Nancy guest and prolific sewing author Gail Brown. Gail, we're going to give some novel and inspiring ideas today. Nancy, the best part of our sewing projects is that the sewing time is kept to a minimum but produces gifts that have maximum appeal. Let's start by poking some good-natured fun at your favorite stuffed shirt. Buy an inexpensive or on-sale shirt or retire one of his overworn wearables. Then archive it transformed as his special pillow. And that's what's next on Sewing with Nancy. To make this fun and functional gift, we need just a few supplies. We're starting with a pillow form. I like to use a little larger one, maybe 20 inch. Or reuse a pillow that is sure. worn at your house. Because you're going to cover it up and we're going to give it additional shaping. To give it a man physique, we're going to add shoulder pads, and you can recycle the shoulder pads too. And we're just going to add those onto our corners and hand base them in place very fast and easy. We're not going to use any finesse here for sewing, just stab it through all the layers. And just enough so it is on there, we're going to be covering it up, Nancy, with a layer of fleece to smooth out the edges and define our shoulders even a little more. So we're just going to put these over the top, this piece of fleece over the top and curve it so that we get smoothing we over the top layer. This is not a science, as we, will, as we no. said many times through this series. This is just fun sewing. And with your needle and thread, just like we've done mm -hmm. on this one side, you're going to hand base that on. So we'll, we'll just put a couple pins in here because I'm not going to get that all basted on right now, but you get a nice square-shouldered look. The shirt, either recycled or a new one, and we just bought this, a small or medium. Sometimes the large shirts are too big for a pillow. The distance between the pockets and the length is not in proportion to a pillow. So this is a really inexpensive shirt, but it's kind and of you, a fun And these look. are easy to find and inexpensive. And then we're going to turn it inside out and fit it to our uh, shaped pillow form. It's important to do the pin fitting because you can't measure the shirts as easily as you could some flat fabric. No, and you want it to look, you want a taut fit uh, inside. So we're going to tuck this pillow form in. Let's make a great graduation gift, off to school gift. Perfect for... My husband wants one of these for his office couch. <laughs> there you go. Alrighty, now we're almost ready to do some of the fitting. We'll start on the side. And Nancy, I usually find that you have a little bit of your sleeve extending into the pillow, mm -hmm. and you don't follow your side seams exactly, but just get a, a um, taut fit is your most important element to this. And I pin it down the sides and then across the bottom. So snug. Yes. And it doesn't have to be perfectly square. No. In fact, it may not be, and you don't have to worry about that at all. We have it tied on the top. <clears throat> Notice that the white is showing through. We'll have a way to cover that up in just a minute. Let's look at this stuffed shirt pillow that's on the way to getting complete. All we've done is we've pinned it, and now we've just used a straight stitch following our pin markings and trimmed off our, our sleeves and our excess hem down to about a one-inch seam allowance. That's kind of nice after pinning. 
and trimming to one inch to take it off the pillow and, and do the stitching. You could do that as well, or you could just stitch around at the opening. The choice is yours. And once you've done that, then you have this opening, opening already made for you. You don't have to make one. You pull your form out and put it back on right sides out. And you have your finished uh, stuffed shirt. And one thing that I like to do, Nancy, is I, un I take a little bit of mm -hmm. extra fleece. And to fill out what I call empty corners, I tuck it in through the front closing. And it gives it a little bit more of a He-Man physique <laughs> to some shape. Okay. Uh, some shape there, very easy. Now let's, let's talk about this top section. This is left over from the shirt sample we just had, but from the sleeve or hem. And then I like to angle it on the bias so that it matches my pockets. I tuck it inside the neckline opening, and then with the same needle and thread, just hand baste it with a running stitch around to hold the piece inside the neckline. And the little accent at the pocket is a bandana. And you like to use half of a scarf. I use I use the other half for our next project. I cut it in half for less bulk and then fold it in an ascot shape like this so that I can tuck it in the pocket. Tucked in. And, and hand tacked in place. And you've got a finished pillow. This really is a quick gift. So often we get letters from our viewers saying, give me more gift ideas for guys. And this certainly is a, a perfect one for that. Stuffed shirt using a 20 inch size pillow, a size small to medium guy shirt, a little hand sewing and some pin fitting, and you have a gift ready to give. Rescue an overused, underused, or fashionably dysfunctional shirt, and in one short sewing session, renew it as a personable, practical laundry bag. Consider giving it as a set in tandem with a companion stuffed shirt pillow. It's the perfect off to school gift. As you might guess, we're going to be working with a shirt. This time, rather than the small or medium size, Gail, your recommendation is the large size. Or even an XXL, it makes mm -hmm. more room for the laundry. And even though it's inside out, we'd like to point out that denim is the more durable type of fabric to choose for this shirt. I like to use a tightly woven, denim's a great choice because it is so durable and stable. So we're going to probably stuff it full of towels and lots of other things. We have a shirt, a hanger, and let's start with the hanger. On the hanger, Nancy, I have hand basted two recycled shoulder pads mm -hmm. to give us a more defined shoulder line. And probably those shoulder pads that are covered with fabric would be better than the sew-in shoulder pads. Correct, and these, um, the fabric's gonna hold the mm -hmm. laundry bag in place too. We have this shirt inside out on the hanger and center the hanger the way that you will have it when it's hanging and then we're going to pin fit it just the way kind of we worked with on the pillow. And you're just going to follow the line of the edge of the hanger and pin down straight through to the hemline. So I'll just give myself some stitching lines. I think I'll go over just a touch. Not too tight. Right. We're going to leave some room for all the stuff you're going to put in. Usually it means pinning out the sleeve, but mm -hmm. if you come a little bit into the sleeve sure. for a larger hanger, no problem. So you do the same pinning on both sides, stitch along the pins. Trim off your seam. And turn it right side out. I'll give you that shirt and we'll pull up the one that's almost finished. So after we have stitched the side mm -hmm. seams, you see here, we're going to also stitch our hem so our laundry won't fall out. Mm -hmm. And on this one, Nancy, there was a pleat on the yoke, so I had to pleat in the hem giving it the same shape. So Some shirts you won't have to do that. That leftover bandana is stuck inside the pocket. We just put our hanger inside and you have got a quick and easy laundry bag. Isn't this a fun thing to make? And it is really quick. No longer must bulletin boards be strictly utilitarian. Customize yours quickly and affordably, combining a ready-made picture frame and favorite fabrics into a charming and functional accessory for any room. Yeah, we have some easy projects here, but what I like about this one is that the fabric choice is yours. It is. You're going to use fabric and you're going to use a ready-made frame. Picture frame. Any size you would like to fit your fabric size. I remove the glass and I also remove the cardboard insert. And after I remove that, Nancy, it is my pattern to cut foam board. It's quarter inch thick, 
foam fill board that you find at art or office supply stores and you're just going to cut it to fit the same size. Mm -hmm. It's going right. to go inside your frame. Now the fabric on our completed bulletin board is cut on the bias. Let me show you the right side of it. The reason I cut this on the bias was just to give a more interesting mm -hmm. look and that way I didn't have to match my lengthwise and crosswise directions on my frame. So if you have a print or a pattern like this then do the same and we also have cut a buffer fabric, a second layer to give it more padding. Yes and you can still pin in because it's not too thick. And the fabric is cut about three inches larger all the way around and instead of using needles and pins right now we're going to just use staples. Be sure to pull it snugly. We're going to work east, west, north, south like we do on so many of our projects and be sure and pull it taut and on your corners you're just going to do some quick mitering to pull it down. And I think you get the idea. This is very fast and easy and if you do it wrong it's not taut enough just pull it out and do it again. We just Okay, and then you do the underside or the lower edge just the same way. Very simple and fast. Sometimes we take time with mitering, but not with this one. Then put it into your frame, and the fasteners on the frame can just be tucked back down. And I have also added some wide adhesive tape to cover it, and that sure. way your staples don't come out and mm -hmm. your fabric doesn't ravel. Flip it to the right side, and this is just a little bit larger frame. We also have some tack buttons to use as a substitute for thumbtacks. To make those, all I did was take a small head pin, mm -hmm. some needle nose pliers, and I bent the tip down. So here's a traditional pin with, without, with a little head on it, and you bent under about a fourth of an inch or so. And then without glue, just insert it inside the tack button, and I have a decorative tack that's easy to handle. Now these tack buttons you traditionally see on denim skirts or denim pants and they're put on, there's a backing. Well, we're just going to use that front part at the top, the decorative area, and presto, a, a great sewing look, fabric, interesting combinations. I like to use my bulletin board like this in my sewing area. Mm -hmm. You could change it with the seasons, couldn't you, if you wanted to. So this is a great idea for making, using some decorator fabric, a frame, and some tack buttons. Give it a try. Next, we'd like to show you how to create a pocketed patchwork pinup. Simply fold and staple to patch this colorful bulletin board scheme. You'll save wear and tear on precious photos and memorabilia too, because the pocket design requires minimal or no pinning. We'd like to show these two bulletin board ideas right next to each other because we're going to use some of the same concepts. We are. We are covering a board for our frame just as we did in our previous segment sh doing the patchwork pinup. So we've covered our base board in a fabric to fit our frame. A little exception here is that we've cut our foam board about a quarter inch smaller on all sides to accommodate the layers of fabric. Let me just show you on our finish board what we mean by the layers of fabric. That red fabric is covering the base and then these are layers fabrics that have folds in it to create the patchwork create the pocket so it's going to get a little wider and a little longer due to the bulk of the fabric. Go through your fabric stash or find some of your favorite fabrics and do some layering, kind of a chevron look. We have kind of a scheme here. Gail will take care of one side, I'll do the other. And I, I was inspired by a quilting pattern to, to make the, this design, but you could use the one sure. of your choice. We're just using large pieces of fabric folded wrong sides together and create a chevron. And I'm spacing these about two inches apart. On a larger board, you might go up to three inches apart. There we go. We're going to have some extra fabric to trim away, but first let's just get the design determined. There we are. It's looking pretty. And then I have one more, Nancy. Whoop, I think I go next. Okay, you go There ahead. we are. And we make certain that the fabric, I'm kind of feeling the edge of the board, is covering all the edges. You want it to extend beyond mm -hmm. the edge so we can staple it on the back. 
This isn't a lot of sewing, but it's using beautiful fabric, so I'll just use some of our tack buttons to hold the things in place. Then a handy way to turn it so that you can staple it is to just place your frame over it, and then you're going to turn it, and then trim some of your layers underneath, Nancy, so it's not so bulky. And your lower layer is going to be trimmed the most. Right, so I'll make this the smallest, and then I would gradate it. This Each is, one different. Yeah. This is not like garment construction. We can kind of be, a, we don't have to be as precise for this one. Not at all. So you can see the ease and of doing this. Once you have mm -hmm. graded your layers and flipped them back. Just make believe those are graded. There yes, we go. and you're going to staple across, like we did in our pennant bulletin board, north, south, east, right. west. And it really kind of is nice to have a helping hand to, to work on this. And we do, do the grading and the stapling on the opposite sides, too. Once you have done all your stapling, mm -hmm. you put it back in your frame, just as we did on our pinup board, and you've got pockets for all your pictures. And they go in so easily and stay just, just the way you see it. It's a great way of combining decorating and quilting ideas. Gail shows us that our next quick gift idea, an easy, elegant wrap, can be the perfect fashion compromise. It adds warmth and flair without the weight or bulk of a coat. Or in really cold weather, wear it over your coat. As with our other projects in this series, the sewing is streamlined and the process is great fun. To make this great wrap, you'll need two yards of knit fabric. We used an interlock, or you could use a blue clay knit, something that has a little bit of weight to it. Now, knit fabric is generally 54 to 60 inches wide, so you're going to use almost the entire portion of all that fabric. This tissue paper shows the pattern shape. The measurements written on the tissue are correct. This is half scale, so I could fit it on my board. The width of the tissue is half the width of the fabric. 27 to 30 inches wide and the length of the tissue paper would be 20, uh, 72 inches excuse me the full two yards so ha the fabric would be folded in half and then the full yardage notice that one half of the pattern tissue is shaped to the 72 inch length as well as the lower edge curved or shaped in the same manner the center point is needed on the long end on the long edge. You'll need to find the center point. The fabric will be split to that point so that you can drape it around your shoulders. Now this was half scale. Now you're going to see quarter scale so that you can see the whole project at once. Here's the slit that I mentioned. When the fabric was folded, this was the center point and you'd slit along the fold to the center point. First finish all the outer edges. Press under five, a uh, five-eighths of an inch seam allowance, or thereabouts, finger press and steam, and then with a double needle, if you'd like, you could also use a single needle, stitch along the edge, holding the seam allowance in place. So you're going to sew all the way around the outer edges. The next step is to stitch the inside neck opening. Again, press under the five-eighths of an inch seam allowance and do the double needle stitching except when you get to this curve. You cannot press under the entire 5 8 so just press under just a fourth of an inch or less to make that bend or around the curve. And then finish stitching, going back to the 5 8 of an inch pressed under edge. A very simple finish. The next step is to simply enjoy and wear. Simply wrap it around your neckline. Here's the center front opening. You can wear it open as it is on the dress form, or Take the free ends and wrap it around the shoulders, one or two, however you'd like to wear it. As you can see, it's fast, fun, and so enjoyable. I hope you're inspired to make some of these great gift ideas that Gail and I have been showing you, from a stuffed shirt pillow to bulletin board ideas, as well as this easy, elegant wrap. We have another thought in this wrap. Rather than making it out of knit, you could also make it out of silk or a lightweight fabric, but make it in a shawl. Just buy one yard of fabric and cut it 30 inches wide instead of the full width of 54. 
And then you, I'll show you how to do the sewing and stitching in our book that accompanies this series, Quick Gifts and Decor. We'll be back with more right after this. Here's a hint from Madeira. When sewing with metallic thread, take time to team up the best needle and thread combination. Start with Madeira's metallic needle to avoid thread stripping and breakage. Next look at thread options. Madeira's textured metallics add a delicate shimmer, while Madeira's smooth metallics add a sparkly shine. A third option is Madeira's heavy metal thread. As the name implies, this heavier thread gives a richer, filled-in look. Madeira offers three options for elegant stitching opportunities. Here's a hint from Pfaff. When working with Pfaff's Fantasy Embroidery Unit or Free Motion Embroidery, use these tips. Slip the stabilizer underneath the hoop instead of including it in the hoop. You'll be able to keep the fabric very taut with this idea. Double check that you've lowered the presser bar in the sewing position. It's an easy step to forget. And change the needle with each new design. Sometimes there are thousands of stitches in a design. The needle tip easily dulls and could snag your work. Now, enjoy the process. It's time for sewing and creating terrific gifts. Welcome to Sewing with Nancy and to this third program on the series Quick Gifts and Decor. Joining me throughout this series is sewing specialist and author Gail Brown. Gail, tell our viewers what we're going to start with. Nancy, we're going to begin with gifts that can be easily and quickly made for new arrivals. Let's start with a baby tie bunting. Tied, this bunting becomes a snuggly. Untied, it lies conveniently flat as a nap or changing mat. Like all of our gift and decor ideas, this project can be made easily in an evening or two. A real bonus for busy sewing people. And that's what's next on Sewing with Nancy. To create the baby tie bunting, you'll need three yards of fabric, two of one print or design and one of another. The two yard piece is going to be your backing and your contrasting rectangles. We've untied the bunting just to show you that it is a flat quilt. Really simple. The bunting shape is created just when you tie those mm -hmm. ties. We'll show you how it goes together. Nancy, we're going to start with 11 by 14, 11 by 14 rectangles. We're going to cut five of one print, five of another. I mean, four of another, right. excuse me. We need a nine patch. A nine patch. And we have pieced them together in a very basic nine patch scheme. You could choose a more complicated quilting pattern if you would like. Then after you have it pieced together, just use fourth of an inch seam allowances, cut a batting, polyester batting, the same size as your quilt top. Now the yard that you have remaining is going to be the fabric for the backing, the back layer. And when we put our back layer on, we have sandwiched our batting between and have extended our backing inch and a quarter beyond because that's going to be our binding. Now your backing fabric will be larger than you need and you can see on Gail's side way over on the other side that we have the extra fabric so with an inch and a fourth just measure and Gail's going to kind of eyeball it right now but measure approximately an inch and a fourth and trim away the excess fabric. So basically, we're not teaching you too much new if you've quilted before. We would like to also have you do the pinning, and we're going to use some curved basting pins, quilting pins, starting from the center, and pin all the layers together. So you're just placing those mm -hmm. intermittently right. then. Remember, the name of this series is Quick Gifts and Decor, so we're going to later put all the layers together with a ribbon and tie them. But you, if you wanted to machine or hand quilt, you could do that as well. Another step we're going to take now, Nancy, is placing mm -hmm. our ties in place. And you can use self-fabric or right. ribbons. And um, you made yours out of self-fabric in turn tubes that are 11 inches long. Right. I'll just use one of my favorite turners to put the tube threaded onto the cylinder. And then this has a second part. It is a long wire. And I'll put the wire in the center of the tube. Sort of like a ponytail yeah, effect on it the is. end. We'll just wrap the extra fabric length around the end of the cylinder. It has a little, the wire has a little pigtail at the end. It's coming out. Make sure that this little pigtail wire, it's right down here, goes through the fabric and just pull it through. 
easy to do. And on the ones we've used on this quilt, Nancy, we have knotted the ends and seam seal using seam sealant, the ends not even turn mm -hmm. them under. Or if you'd like, you can kind of tuck that edge in to finish it and then do a knot. The way we have the quilt positioned, we have the lower edge of the quilt facing us and the top edge downward so that we could show you where the ties are positioned. Um, in the reference book that accompany, accompanies this series, uh, we show the different placements. Right. One real important one, Nancy, is at the corner at the bottom. Step it away, about a seam allowance away from the edge and pin so that um, it's free to tie because we're going to miter this corner, so have it a seam allowance width away. And now we have five ties along each side and four across the bottom. And again, we give you those instructions. But this is going to be able to allow you to tie that as you're finished. The next step is to do the binding around the edge, and we're going to use the backing fabric and bring it to the face side. Now remember, this is an inch and a fourth, and at the corner, of the top fabric and the batting. We're simply going to fold it, the corner, at a miter. And then, this is pre-pressed, but form a picture frame miter, just the way you'd like it to look when it's finished. And we've already touched that with the tip of the iron to make it complete. Now this little edge right here is too long, so Gail, I'm gonna ask you, just give that a haircut. Trim off that extra tail and then to finish the binding, meet the cut edge of the backing, fold it to meet the cut edge of the top fabric, and then fold a second time. You're just enclosing the edges. And then we're just going to edge stitch along that folded edge to create our binding. To create both sides, it's very neat and clean. A really fast way of binding the quilt. I'm going to show you again our finished quilt to show one of the last steps, and that is to tie all the layers together. This was tied in red, but so you could see it a little bit more clearly, I have ribbon that I've started to tie again, tying at each corner as well as in the center of each of the squares, and one in the center, so that all the layers stay together. And you just tie with a ribbon. It's a simple, fast project, about two evenings of sewing, and you have a great gift to give as a baby shower or to welcome a new arrival. Make this multi-purpose hamper in minutes for a baby gift or for your own home. This super quick project is made from less than two yards of fabric and a decorative hanger. Hang it in a baby's room as a diaper stacker or in the bathroom as towel storage or in a bedroom as a laundry bag. Here's how. As Gail mentioned, you'll need less than two yards of fabric and of the main fabric, you'll need about a yard and eighth. Correct, and one piece that we're going to cut for the base is 32 inches long and the full width of the fabric. So 45 by 32. And then for our contrasting mm -hmm. yoke and base, this one, the yoke at the top is seven and a half inches wide by the full width of the fabric. And for this one, Nancy, I just turn under a half an inch, press it, meet the edges. The top edges together and edge stitch along my fold. Quick sewing. At the lower edge, that's going to be kind of the base of the hamper, needs a little bit more support. And to get that, I interfaced uh, with a fusible interfacing. This piece is five inches wide by the full width of the fabric. I did the same technique, folding under and pressing and edge stitching the band on. So two simple edge stitches, and then you need to mark the center points along the top edge as well as the lower edge. And I'm just going to meet, have Gail help me meet those salvage edges together. And I've placed a pin or you could nip the fabric, just a little marking at the top edge as well as the lower edge. This lower section is ready to have the next step, and I have the pin marking the center point. And now is where you need to place the hanger, your decorative hanger on your fabric. And the reason we're doing this is to fit the width of our fabric to the width of the hanger. So we have the center of the hanger at the center pin mark, and we've kind of pre-pressed this, but let's show our viewers how we determined how wide to make the hamper or the diaper stacker. And you don't want too tight a fit on your hanger, but this gives you an idea of how wide your hems need to be. And we're going to do double hems 
So, Nancy, why don't you show the folding technique? Sure. Th at this pinpoint where, my, where I'm pointing is where the seam should be, and I'll just unfold it again. And like that miter of, or binding on the quilt, you simply meet the cut edges to the fabric, to the pinpoint, and fold once all the way down, and then fold twice all the way down. So you have it pressed neatly all the way in this position, and then edge stitch this fold to the fabric. And you're going to do that on both sides. Right, right. So that's really quite simple. So far, four rows of stitching. And then we need to um, fit the top edge of the hanger and contour our fabric to that top edge of the hanger. And so we place our hanger on top and using a marking pen, shape, create a shape that will be our stitching guide. You can see we've stitched along one side and then trimmed the seam allowance off. And you'd zigzag the edges. Um, Nancy, I leave a two inch opening sure. in the middle so our hanger can easily mm -hmm. be slipped through. Along the lower edge, we need to miter this corner. And to miter, simply fold the fabric, forming a triangular shape. And then stitch across so that your seam is four inches long, centering the seam in the center to create a four inch base, which is a perfect diaper width. Here, the four inch seam has been stitched in red, and again, the seam allowance is trimmed. Simple and fast. When you turn this right side out, we'll again pull up our diaper hamper, stacker. This has all been trimmed, stitched, and we have a base in this hamper that we just covered with foam core. We did, and this base is four inches by 15 inches. It's covered with fabric and just slipped in. One last thing I'd like to show you, Nancy, to create this seam, at the top and at the base, I simply place a ribbon, the rest of our ribbon behind the seam, and this sample shows it, and then the top stitch on either side centering the ribbon, and that makes a pretty windowed seam. It's very clever and great to be made out of baby fabric or fabric that matches your bathroom. With just a half a yard of polar fleece, sew a self-tying scarf. This unique design requires no knotting or fasteners of any kind. Plus, this style eliminates bulk and streamlines the wearability of this attractive accessory. Sew the muffler style version in the popular polar fleece or a scarf version in a silk or silk-like fabric. Here's how. First, I'm going to have you make a pattern, just out of tissue paper or wax paper. Cut a piece of tissue paper that's about 40 inches long, not about 40 inches long. And one end is going to be eight inches wide, eight inches, and taper that equally down the 40 inch length all the way to four inches. So it's 40 inches long, eight inches wide at one end, and this end is four inches. You'll see these two other markings that I have. They're eight and a half inches from each end. After cutting out two layers of fabric, that's why you need a half of a yard of the fleece, at these eight and a half inch markings, clip or nip five eighths of an inch to inward. Clip through all the layers. Then you can also sew the short ends together, not the long ends, just the short ends. The purpose of clipping to this eight and a half inch mark is to fold under the fleece at this point, the five eighths of an inch seam allowance, and stitch from one niche notch to the other along both the top and the lower edge. This sample shows it already stitched. Now since this fabric doesn't ravel, all you have to do is this stitching. If you'd like to make it in a silk or silk-like fabric, which I'll show you in a few minutes, you'd have to clean finish this edge. And this will be the neckline area, or the area that will be the self-tying of the scarf. The next step is to simply sew all the remaining edges together. I have started to pin the two layers. You'd sew down this long length and then across the bottom and back up until the finished section and stop sewing. I have a sample to show you this. Because the polar fleece is rather bulky, the next step after doing the stitching with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance is to angle cut the corners and do some grading or trimming of the seam allowances. This side is left uncut and here you can see I angle cut and then did the grading and trimming. Through the opening section, turn it right side out after complete 
completing all the grading and trimming. And here's your scarf. As I mentioned, it's self-tying because the wide end goes through that opening. And there it is. If you'd like to make it out of silk or a silk-like fabric, you could use a slightly wider width, about 10 inches wide at the bottom, and use the same techniques. Both scarves are fast to make and great accessories. You'll love this tree skirt. Although luxurious, it is constructed flat and fast. Like a drawstring drindle skirt, it adjusts to fit most bases, and the soft gathers visually balance even the most heavily decorated tree. To make this great tree skirt, you'll need five and a fourth yards of fabric. It's a lot of fabric with very simple sewing. You're not going to cut that fabric at all. The ends that were cut from the bolt, the short ends, fold under two inches. Fold under two inch side hems and edge stitched into place. Now, of course, you'll use matching thread to your fabric, but that is a contrast that you can see a little bit better. Form the top casing next by pressing under seven and a half inches. So work on a ping pong table or a large table for pressing because you'll have lots of yardage to press. Then after creating that top press from the fold, stitch four inches and then stitch a second time seven inches from the fold. So two rows of stitching. The reason to have the two rows of stitching is to form a casing. And the casing is going to be where the bow is threaded through. So here's the casing, and here's the top, top heading that's going to have a lot of fluff and fullness. The lower edge has another deep hem, seven inches. So press from the lower edge, seven inches. And that's what I have pressed on this smaller sample. Now, you really don't need this full seven inch hem on the tree skirt, but we are going to cut it extra wide because we're going to add some trim. Now this trim is optional, but it certainly highlights and gives a nice look to the tree skirt edge. This first sample shows that the hem has been pressed. And from, this is looking from the right side. And behind the fold, place rickrack. And we found rickrack, of course, that had the gold lame effect. And pin into place. This next sample will feature how it has been stitched and simply stitch along the lower edge, just top stitching. Now the full seven inch hem is still underneath and you certainly don't need all of this hem length. But what we did to create a little, is to create a tuck underneath the rickrack, about a one inch tuck, and then fold under the hem to meet that folded tuck. When we are finished, it'll be about a two and a half to three inch finished hem. It's like framing that rickrack. If you didn't want to use rickrack, you could also consider to use cording in that area. Just again, tuck the cording into place and then top stitch the hem. So the hem is just top stitched right along the cording. Now that lovely bow that we had is made out of lame. We cut a yard and a half of lame fabric and out of the lame fabric we cut it into strips so that there were 18 inch strips. The strips were sewn together to make three yards of fabric. The wide end or the narrow end excuse me of the bow is nine inches because it's 18 inches folded in half and we stitched a half of an inch from the edge. The ends are not sewn yet and we left an opening about six inches wide in the middle. To get the graceful effect at the end, rather than sewing, use a rubber band and tie very securely the end closed. Do this on both ends and turn it right side out. And now you'll see this graceful look at that end. Isn't that pretty? Now thread this bow through the casing of the tree skirt. And here's our lovely tree skirt. And through that wide casing, you could thread the bow and adjust it to fit your tree. It's graceful, lovely, and extremely elegant. All made with five and a fourth yards of fabric, some trim, and a little sewing know-how. It's time to wrap up this three-part series on quick gifts and decor. Our objective was to give you a variety of 
quick and easy projects that could be sewn in an evening or two. Gail, thanks for sharing with us many of your great ideas and for being a guest once again on Sewing with Nancy. It's been my pleasure, and I hope that our viewers are inspired no matter what their sewing expertise. So give these ideas a try. Refer to the book for easy reference for yardages and cutting. And join us again. Bye for now. Sewing with Nancy has been brought to you in part by FOP, simply the best European line of sewing machines. Ginger, a tradition of quality in scissors and shears. Oxmoor House, publishers of sewing, quilting, and craft books. Madeira Threads, designed for home and professional embroiderers everywhere. And by Nancy's Notions Sewing Catalog, featuring specialty sewing books and notions.